Celebrities in the basement, the place to be. Karen Wilder Martin on your TV. Politics, drama, music, sports, arts. Favorite celebs, climbing the charts. First hand info on the live. Careers, next projects on the rise. Come visit Karen every week. Never know who's in the hot seat. Celebrities in the basement. Good evening. I'm Karen Walla Martin for Moorish Entertainment Community Foundation, and welcome to Celebrities in the Basement. John and I are out and about in Philadelphia, in North Philadelphia, at the Dobbins Vocational High School for the Pathways to Pardons opportunity there. State Senator Sharif Street will join Lieutenant Governor Mike Statt and the Pennsylvania Board of Pardons to assist individuals with criminal record relief and economic empowerment this evening at Pathways to Pardons Opportunity Fair. All participants may access vendors and several workshops focusing on clearing a criminal record, creating an LLC, and developing a business plan and branding. Keynote speakers include Senator Sharif Street, Lieutenant Governor Mike Stack, as well as other noted officials. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more of the Pathways to Pardons Opportunity Fair. Hello, this is Dr. Tony Damon, proud principal of Morrell Dobbins CTE High School. I'm hanging out with my girl Karen from Yorktown, and you are watching Celebrities in the Basement. Now, now I'm here with Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor Mike Stack and State Senator Sharif Street. And we are here representing the Pennsylvania Board of Pardons. Gentlemen, thank you, first of all, for allowing us to come out this evening. Can you fill my audience in exactly what's going on tonight? Well, Senator Street is a great senator and represents the area. And I'm, uh, just like he, I'm a guy who believes in second chances. We have been squandering the lives of so many people instead of giving them a second chance, a chance to, cl to clear up their record and get a good job and be really a full part of the community. And until they can do that, they're, they're not gonna have that chance, so they're just getting punished over and over again. So we're teaming up to make sure that we give everybody a chance to get a pardon. And I'm chairman of the Board of Pardons, so we can help people get a pardon, show them how to do it, and make sure that they can get one. And it is a full house tonight. Yes. We're really, truly, truly excited about the event tonight. And Senator uh, Street, tell me about how you actually came about this situation. Well, you know, this is an issue that uh, has been of great importance to me. Um, you know, I've, it was an issue that Senator Kitchen championed. You know, I served as, uh, before being elected to, to the Senate, I served as counsel to Sheriff Williams, who's here. Um, and so I know a lot about criminal justice issues and, and as an attorney people ask me all the time you know I, uh, how do I clean my life up, turn my life around I've got to, I've made this mistake but I want to make things better and so we wanted to make sure that people had a chance to uh, see all the resources that are available not just pardons but also expungements and also um, opportunity and all the so jobs and opportunities all right so we're glad to have the sheriff here with us as well is our great sheriff of Philadelphia, who's a Dobbins alumni, the Honorable Jewel Williams. Thank you, Sharif. I want to say good evening to everybody. I just would like for everybody just to repeat this after me, this word. Everybody deserves a second chance. All right. And the reason why I'm up here is because I used to be a Pennsylvania legislator in this area. I happen to be the ward leader in this area, but I also graduated from Dobbins High School. And I had the opportunity to get a second chance because when I was in high school, I was a hell raiser. And let me tell you, some of you guys that know me from the street, I can tell you the real backstory. But as uh, Lieutenant Governor said, somebody gave us a second chance and we got a break. And so I get the opportunity, so when you look at me, you're looking at a brother who got a break. And that means that if I get the opportunities to help somebody, I'm gonna reach back and help somebody. Now, I say a big shout out to the principal of this school, Principal Tony. Now I am here with the principal of Dobbins Vocational School, Dr. Tony Damons. But you know, we your Tonians yes. first. Yes, we are. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Tony, I so mean, good to see you. 
a pleasure to be in your building, in your home. Yes. Tell my audience, uh, first of all, this event is phenomenal. Tell my audience, how did your school get to be the school to host this? Well, I think part of it is because, one, we are a community school. And the reason why we were chosen, I believe, as a community school is because we believe in being a blessing to the community which we uh, are educated and are educating our children in. And so it became a two-way street. So when the mayor's office of education was looking for a school, why not us? And so anything that has to do with the community, meaning we did a, a really big Thanksgiving dinner where we actually fed almost four to 500 people back in Thanksgiving, Anything that helps to uplift yes. this area, that's what we're about. And so when Senator Street said he wanted to have a program, he reached out to us. And I said, oh, you know we love to throw a party. Yes, yes. Just call us and we're in. You know, yes. our kids are over there. They're cutting hair. They're doing manicures, the graphics department. They actually did our brochures, the programs that you see tonight. Yes. Culinary Arts did all of the, um, the refreshments for the evening. So it also gives our, ch our children a chance to really connect with the community and the community to connect with the children yes, because yes. people see these kids with their hoods on and you know mm -hmm. and they think our kids are angry all the time yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. so they get to see our children in a whole different light oh this is so wonderful now let's talk about renovation and going forward with Dobbins because you know we talked off camera about you know is it going to have a theater program or any type of uh, media type program Let, let's talk about it so we are blessed to be going under a $50 million renovation. Yes. So where we have already seven career and tech programs, we're going to add three more programs in the career and tech realm, which will be biotechnology, networking technology, and digital communications, which is a whole TV production yes. uh, program. But then in addition to that, we're going to get an entire music theater music. studio. Yes. I mean, yes. I'm just blown away because I remember choir when you used to stand on the risers and sing and that's but they it. said it's oh it's not like that anymore it's all digital and it's going to be state-of-the-art so I'm just so excited for the young people in this community absolutely I am truly truly excited to be here and it was so wonderful oh, so yes. hey Tracy look what I got Tracy yeah. hey. we have uh, Judge Mel Curie who's here as a sitting judge um, and we'll let him say a couple of words and uh, Carmela DiCicco who is, a is an aspiring judge we're gonna let the we're gonna let the judge talk and we're going to recognize Carmel. Good evening, everyone. How are you? My name is Judge Vince Belcuri. I was appointed by Governor Wolf, and I've been sitting approximately two years. My first assignment was in criminal motions, where I heard expungement petitions. And it's important to have people on the bench that understand the difference between retaining a record and allowing the expungement of a record. There is a seven-pronged test that the district attorney has to prove in order to keep a record. And more judges need to be or learn it in that area so that we understand that the felony records that are attached to some crimes that are sometimes overcharged do not do any good to keep taxpaying citizens working. All right, we shouldn't be a warehouse, we should be a place where people can come and after they pay their dues and time has passed, they should be able to get a job and not be held back by felony convictions. So my job is to evaluate that and make sure that we keep as many of our youth out of prison and working hard so that they become productive members of Philadelphia. I know you won't mind that, but when the mayor gets here, we do want to show respect. But right now, give it up for my main man, Q Dizzy. Let's rock and roll, baby. Hey, you, I don't even know how you follow that. Like, he's like super hype. How y'all doing, man? Uh, you know, I think it's, it's really important for you know us to give ourselves a second chance. If you're here for a second chance, make some noise if you're here for a second chance, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, people feel like, man, you know, you know, this person did this, this is a problem, I, you know, I gotta turn my back. So I, I wanted to come down here. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys, like, I'm here for you guys for support. You know, like, I, I come from Germantown, some of the neighborhood is North Philly, and, you know, didn't have a lot of resources. After the mayor comes, and every, we, we talk a little bit, we want to break up and, and do certain things, and John, Don Chisholm, you're going to help out too, right? You just got married too, right? Let's get stand up, Don. Stand up, Don. He just got married, lawyer, he can help you out. Look like you came from a, a, after work. So you can help people out. 
And here's a, here's another thing from North Philly, a success story. This dude, I remember, I remember before he, he he went in. He went into jail and he came back home, and he's been on the road ever since, making 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 noise, man. Mike Epps, Kevin Hart, doing this thing straight from North Philly. He's been in the same position some of you have been in. Let's give it up for my man Buck Wild, comedian <laughs> Buck Wild. Now Buck. You thought we was at a Meek Mill concert or something? I'm just, no, I'm just, I didn't know. You, 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 you swagging a little bit. I, I didn't, I didn't know. Would you, I, well, if, if you, if you've ever seen Buck Wild, make some noise if you've seen Buck Wild. This dude's always in the community. Now Buck, the mayor is coming. We have some TV cameras right there. Let's keep it clean. <laughs> what's up, y'all? I said, what's up, y'all? Yo, I'm gonna share my story a little later, right? I'm gonna share my story, because I got a lot of people who don't know that I was born in Muncie for penitentiary, and I went to Masterman College, and then I went to jail. And I'm living proof that you can go to jail and do five, three years, and be a parole violator, and come on this stage and make more than everybody that's touching this stage tonight. So I'm living proof that you can do it. So I'm gonna give it back to my man, Sharif, and he gonna introduce the mayor. All right. How y'all doing today? Once again, you know, I want to tell you something. Um, I, I now have the pleasure to introduce, and I said I wanted to do this, but I wanted you all to understand, there's so many folks that I walk around the community that say, nobody cares about what's, what we're going through. They don't understand our struggle. Sharif, what are you going, what are you going, are you going to tell them what's going on? Are you going to make sure that they're here to understand that just because we made a mistake one point, we can't turn it around. We had the Lieutenant Governor here earlier, who is the Chair of the Board of Pardons. I pointed out to you, that the governor had reduced the prison population by 2,000 people with closing the prison, and he's using that money to increase funding for education. Yes. Well, now I'm going to bring, yes. are you clap for that. Yes. Well, now I'm going to bring up a man who said we're going to put money into rebuilding our neighborhoods, who said we're going to put money into making sure that this is a community school, a man who was elected with, a cro with the overwhelming support from across the community, and who said when he campaigned to us, he might not be from this neighborhood, but, he's going from, but he will be back in this neighborhood after he's elected, and he's been a man of his word. Our mayor, Jim Kenney. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome home. We're glad to have you back. We want to see you be successful, and I'm no better than you. Uh, and nobody else is any better than you. None of us are perfect. We make mistakes. Some of us don't get caught. <laughs> um, but what we want you to understand is that our neighborhoods, our communities cannot be successful unless you are successful. Our children cannot be successful unless they see your success. Our children need role models. They need people in the community who are doing the right thing, trying to do the right thing. Even if you made one mistake, even made two mistakes. Life is life is not that simple. Life's very complicated, and a lot of what's happened to people has happened to people as a result of disinvestment, not educating our youth, not educating our folks, not investing in our communities, showing people that there's no hope, making making people look at facilities like libraries or rec centers or parks that are falling down around us and not feeling there's any hope. If you're a little kid and you go to a school that's not educating you, and you come home to a rec center where the plaster's falling out of the ceiling, or it's too dangerous to be in the park, uh, and you're, maybe you don't have a parental structure or a family structure that's gonna keep you straight, you can drift, and you can go, you can drift, a, drift apart, drift away. We want everybody back. I'm Karen Martin. I'm John Martin. Executive, executive producers of Celebrities in the Basement, and you're, you're watching Philly Cam. My name is Reverend Dr. Michelle Ann Simmons, and I'm the founder of Why Not Prosper Incorporated, and you are watching Celebrities in the Basement. Now I am here with Reverend Dr. Michelle Ann Simmons. She has such a story to tell. First of all, this woman of God is amazing. And when you hear her story, you will absolutely know why. The Lord, he's the amazing one. 
-hmm. I'm just a byproduct of his goodness. Mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord, I am. Yes. Tell, tell my audience briefly your story, just briefly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so listen, I'm 49 years old, and I was uh, had a real rough childhood, basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, my um, father and my mother never married. They never was together. Long story short, he came and took me from daycare one day, and then he started, you know, trying to be in my life. But then I started going with him on the weekends, and one weekend I was in a motorcycle accident with him. Mm -hmm. My hip got broke. I was in a cast for like six months, and the first day I came home, he kind of uh, uh, sexually abused me. Yes. And I never never told nobody but I stay high every day after okay Absolutely, yes. and that fostered me going to jail going to prison psychiatric centers and all of that and then that happened all my life from the time I was 12 to I was 27 at 27 I was trying to get myself together because I was messed up with the drugs and I said I'm going to Los Angeles well really I didn't say I was going nowhere I got an article on the paper I called myself getting it together yes, I had yes. a moment of sanity yes. and what happened was I got this um, article about do you want to work do you want to are you encouraged are you energetic? Yes, Do you want to yes, work? And I was like, yes, yeah. Yes, they was yes. like, will you travel? I was like, yes, I will. Because I need to get off this crack. Right? Yes, and yes. I ended up going to all the way to California. Wonderful. Right? And I went out there and my behaviors went there and I went to jail in California. Wow. And I stayed there. Um, so you you were you were trying to run from yourself, basically. But you can't run from yourself. At all. You Wherever you go, you there you it. are. Absolutely. Okay? 100%. And you cannot continue to run from yourself. And you realize this. That's correct. I didn't realize it. Then I just kept right. doing the geographic chain. I went from Jersey to Philly to Nevada to Los Angeles, back to Philly, and everybody was the problem. It was my mom, it was the PO, it mm -hmm. was the judge, nobody liked me, everybody was out to get me, but it was really me. Yes, and it wasn't yes. too, I surrendered to the, the disease of addiction. And then I started, I, I went to jail. This was the thing that changed me. My, my celly was the Manson sister killer lady, what? Susan Atkins. That was my celly. She was there for murdering some kids or some babies and she was like Charles Manson's so, story. So, right, but why were you in this, why was she well, your cellmate? Was, what, what was your charges uh, My charges was with just a possession and prostitution okay, yes. and she was there as a lifer and had been there for years. I mean, when I got in that cell, it was carpet on the floor, a rocking chair, a okay, fish tank. Right. She, this she was a made, California was, institution for home. women. Mm -hmm. So she was at home and they didn't care. They mixed the lifers in with the violators okay, yes. and that was my sully. And she used wow. to tell me, God love you. God got a plan for your life. Go home and get your life to the Lord and Jesus. And I was like, lady, I don't even like Jesus. I've been raped. I've been molested. I don't like no Jesus. And she kept telling me about the Lord. And she kept inviting me to go to church and jail. And one day I just went to the chapel. And before I knew it, I was saying, I want to be saved too. God bless. Uh -huh, God that lady bless. helped me find the Lord. But when I first, after she told me, I went to the chapel. Amazing. I went to the chapel. And then, um... I got out and I went back to the drugs because it didn't I, I, I didn't set in good but mm -hmm. she had planted those seeds yes, for me yes. and God then bless. I got locked up again and when I went back I said I want to go to the chapel and I told the chaplain at the jail I said I'm from Philly I'm not from here I want to go home yes. I said but the parole board said I got to stay here for one year and every time I get released I go to the whole stroll mm -hmm. or to the dope man I never went to the parole man mm -hmm. that's why I didn't like him and that's why yes. I thought he was messing with me he said well if you report I don't have to violate you. Absolutely. absolutely. So anyway, after you all thought that, everybody was against you that were trying to help you. And they and all they were doing was their job. Your mom, they were your, doing your, their job. your family, the parole officers, they were just doing their job, but you thought they were all your enemies. That is correct. Yep. And so fast forward. Fast forward to 2000, that was the year I got the green light from California yes. to come home. And I came home with two green trash bags, hefty trash bags to King of Prussia bus station oh, on, a, on a Greyhound bus. And, um, and when I got home, I had lost my kids. I was going to live with my mom because she was the only one that had set me back in her house. Yes. And there I had gave my life to God. And I just yes. kept asking the Lord to show Guide me what you. to do next. Yes. Yes. And yes. he gave me a vision to open up this program, Let's Why Not the Prosper. Program. Yes. Okay. So the program is called Why Not Prosper. Yes. We just celebrated 15 years, which is that book over there mm -hmm. of being open. Mm -hmm. And our program, I help women coming from prison. I help them stay clean, get their kid back, and make families family sustaining wages. So I'm walking in my purpose. That's our Why Not Prosper magazine right yes, there. Yes. So we talk about addiction and recovery and just how to make it through the struggle and stay clean. Oh, God.
God is and he and now amazing. this one here let me tell you right here this is my newest baby this is here called the why not prosper manual and this here because so many people come say how you do it what you do and I used to tell them so now I wrote it how to start a nonprofit organization you guys <laughs> Wait, let me just say, we actually just started our nonprofit. All right, I mean, all right. This year we just started all right, our nonprofit. All right, excellent. So, Moorish Entertainment Community Foundation. That's what's up. Yes. Excellent, excellent. We're, 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 we're teaching not just youth, but anyone that wants to get in the entertainment industry. Okay. You know, from musicians okay. to actors to okay. videographers sure, to, you know. Sure, yes, absolutely. Yes. That's what's up. That's awesome. They need entrepreneurship. They absolutely need an outlet to do something, and they are so creative. That's youth, teens, moms. Moms, ex offenders, mental health. We need something to occupy our mind. Absolutely. Yup, absolutely. absolutely. So if you need some grant writing tips or some fundraising tips, I'll help you. God bless. I yes, we do. Yes, I do. <laughs> hey, my newfound friend. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Hey. One thing I learned in a part in clinic, and I'll close with that, is that I had to reinvent myself. They had this little record about all the things that I had done when they got my application. By the time I got to the process of a hearing, I had a big, thick book about this big, of everything that I had did, everywhere I had volunteered, all the places I had went and mentored, all the certificates that I've gotten. So y'all, it's possible. And I just want to encourage y'all today, um, get the application, start today. Don't don't let fear rob you, because it is possible. And our administration, our mayor, um, uh, the lieutenant governor, they on fire for this. They on fire for this, and we got to be on fire to get it done too, right? Because it start with us. If you don't believe you can do it, you ain't going to do it. You know, and my mind kept saying, well, you a drug addict. You've been raped. You've been molested. You've been drove off a cliff. You ain't going to be nothing. That was the stories that was told to me. But you know